air conditioning 2020 expedition limited and so here's the 2020 if you want to focus there we go 1000 grams and i had to cut this short because of the last video i got an emergency call so i gotta go i didn't get to show you the charging procedure but now it's charged 1000 grams the outside ambient temperature is 71 degrees that is being taken by my temperature sensor right where the factory ambient temperature sensor is i stuck my ambient temperature sensor so we're both taking it from the uh, same place now if you take a real close look and you look at the fin spacing of that condenser right there let me zoom in on it look at how wide those fins are that's 12 to 14 fins per inch that is a garbage condenser now let me show you we'll get over to the we'll get over to the factory condenser later um but let me show you something we're going to do an experiment in the superheat and the amount of heat picked up off the rear evaporator so we have a rear evaporator located I, I believe it might be back here and might be going the other way but it's under here i talked about you guys who live in places like africa iran uh, dubai all those really really hot places where you're 120 degrees plus every day and i told you about radiant heat and it goes for here in the usa too if you're in a place like arizona or utah in the summer they added something down here that wasn't here before you see this the refrigerant lines are running right here and what have I talked about? Radiant heat. You see the exhaust system right there? There's the exhaust system. That radiates heat. They covered it. Then they put a reflective, they put a metal shield right there and it's nice and shiny so it, it can reflect heat uh, while it's clean. The refrigerant lines, we can't see them and I can't grab them here, but we can see a little bit if I, where was it? Right, I put my clamp up there. You see my clamp right there? there's condensate uh condensation starting to form on that line that's coming from the rear evaporator you see the exhaust right there right above it right where those lines are all that heat would be coming up there in that short area but they protect the refrigerant lines from the radiant heat because you would pick up so much radiant heat and conductive heat no not conductive convention heat from the muffler system especially at idle that they had to cover it you know they don't do things for free and it's not for looks because it's down underneath now let's come back here now we're behind the wheel by the exhaust let me get upside down ah damn i'm getting old when you start making noises when you get when you have to bend over and twist you know you're getting old god damn it it's something my grandpa used to only do so there is heater and air conditioning can you see the condensation on one of those lines let me zoom in let me see if I can get a little closer. Come on, let me in there without, okay, come on, zoom. Do you see, there you go. Can you see a little bit of water droplets forming on one of those lines? That's your evaporator return suction line. And do you see where the radiate, uh, where is it, the heater? No, where the hell is the, the muffler is right, oh, right here. Let me get my hand right there. Let me back up, I'm making you guys dizzy. There we go. So here's the muffler. And they got those running within inches. Now, unfortunately, they have heater hoses, uh, heater lines, metal lines, right next to the suction line. And they radiate off heat right next to the uh, suction line. That That's not a good thing, but that's better than having, you know, they put this plate here to stop that radiant heat. All along, they put that plate and that shield on the other thing. That helps. It's not perfect. But remember, they do it to a price point. Now, I'm attached, you've seen my sensor over there. So let's see what the superheat coming out of this rear evaporator is. So we're not taking the superheat of the front, we're taking the superheat of the back. Remember, we're 70 degrees outside, we're 43 degrees coming out of the front dash. Our superheat for the rear is 13 degrees. Let's get our temperature for the rear. I'll steal it out of the front. We know we are 43 degrees right here. We're in the sun. We're baked. This car has been sitting here for hours baking. So it was like 140 degrees in there when I first got here. And it's chilling down now. 
Uh, let's get to the closest one. I think this is the closest one. Stick it up there and hold. Now let's see what the temperature in the rear is. And our temperature in the rear, 47 degrees. Now you will usually find the rear air conditioning system is a few degrees warmer than the front. And in some situations, some situations on some vehicles, when you turn off the rear, the front will get colder. It's usually like that, but some more than others, some are worse than others at idle. Some are no problem when you're going down the freeway. Different vehicles respond differently. So we're 46 degrees coming out the rear. I'm gonna go throw this in the front again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that clamp that I have above the muffler on the exhaust on the suction line. We're gonna take that off of there and we're gonna move it on the rear line, but way up there. We're gonna see how much heat, how much energy we have absorbed just in the line from the rear to the front. So let's get this back here. I don't care about the rear no more. So now I'm gonna go back under the muffler in the rear of the vehicle. I'm gonna take that clamp because I wanted to know what the superheat was coming out of the muffler and I'm still, I'm not muffler, coming out of the evaporator. And I still don't know cause I'm still not really close to it. I'm just kind of close. And what was, I can't even see, I can't even get my head here cause the tire's in the way. Where's my thing at? Oh yeah, I couldn't get it there. That's right. We have to go to the other side of the tire. I'm still far away. So it said 13 degrees of superheat. If I could get this clamp further back towards the evaporator, it's probably somewhere around nine degrees superheat. Where am I at? You see, see my clamp right there? Okay. So at this point, I was 13 degrees superheat here. If I could get this all the way up, cause it's picking up heat all the way, absorbing into the metal pipe, if I could get this all the way up to the evaporator and take it, I bet you it's about nine degrees superheat right now under these ambient conditions. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure this superheat coming all the way up to the front before the Y. Okay. Do you see that T right there? Let's see if I could zoom in on it. Focus, zoom in. That is coming from the rear, it goes up, it goes over, and it comes back down from the rear. That other thick one coming down into that T part right there, right there is a T. We don't want to clamp anywhere there, we don't want to clamp there, we want to clamp up on this line somewhere away from the T because I want to see what the superheat is here. How much temperature, how much energy has it absorbed through the line through conductive and radiant heat. So, I get onto that. There we go. I'm a couple inches up from the T. That is that is the rear line coming up. It comes over here, comes right there and it drops down and I'm connected right there. So let's see what we picked up. Super heat. Well, let me uh, focus for you guys. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. Super heat, 23 degrees. So we were, we're at this point in the line right here and we are at 23 degrees superheat. At this point right here, when I connected right here at this point, we're at 13 degrees superheat. I cannot get my clamps back here, but I know from experience when I could on different vehicles under different ambient conditions, that that would be about nine degrees superheat and it's probably about a foot away from the evaporator. So did you see how it, that's picking up heat energy through convection and through a little bit of radiation on the non-insulated line it would even be worse if they did not have if they did not have the shield right here and they didn't have that radiant shiny metal right next to the exhaust it would be picking up radiant heat and even more convection heat right to this line and instead of 23 
degrees of superheat, we'd probably have 50 degrees of superheat. You see, and that's energy that you are paying to get rid of in the compressor by heat of compression. That's energy that needs to be expelled through the condenser. And the worse the condenser is, the poorer the job of efficiency of getting rid of the superheat because there's fewer fins per inch, there's fewer cooling passages, and inside the cooling passages, there's fins. In the aftermarket ones, they have fewer. So everything is less, 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 and it all damages the final outcome on the really hot days. Mild days, no big deal. Um, so we're looking at our pressures here. Let me get you out of the glare. Sorry about that, guys, but it is bright and sunny out where I'm at right now. So we've been 31 PSI, a rock steady solid line. Our high side has been staying just under 180, just under 180 PSI and our uh, apple there. You can see the 180 right there and it's just, just staying under it, but really solid. No up and down spikes. We go up to the temperature we're still 43, 44 degrees out of the dash. And let's see what we've done on the time. Flat line, 44 at minute nine. Coming up minute 13, 44, flat line. So that's all I can do. Uh, this was like the fourth video. There were supposed to be more. I, I wanted to get very detailed on this, but I got the emergency call to go to. Uh, on a commercial job and so that takes precedent over everything else oh let's get back to i just wanted to do one more thing here uh cytk we're back into let me see if i could get out of the sun and get inside the vehicle I'm trying to get the glare out of this ipad might be successful yeah that's a little better all right Let's go to refrigerant recovery. No, that's not the one I want. Recharge, refrigerant recharge. E -C -H. Search. Oh, that's under um, procedures. Under procedures, refrigerant recovery, search. Air conditioning system evacuation recharge. I can't read this all to you because I want to get out of here, but I did want to show you this. And this is not all the rules, laws, and regulations and procedures. This is kind of like an average. Now, if you guys can read this, I, I can't go over this for you. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pause the video and read this yourself. I'll go up. Okay, so here's one area. Pause. We'll go down to this number here. And we'll go down to five and we'll roll up and I'll stop right there. And then I'll give you time to pause the video and read this. Now I'm gonna go up again. There you go. Okay, you guys can read that yourself. This is not everything. This is only some things. Now, I like this one best of all. This I will read because as of 2018, I think in California, Bureau of Automotive Repair mandated every shop must have a refrigerant analyzer to check the quality of contaminated refrigerant. Use an AC refrigerant analyzer before recovering your vehicle's refrigerant. Failure to do so will put the shop's bulk refrigerant at risk of contamination. You do this every time. You're here in California, you don't have a refrigerant analyzer, you're a hack shop. Because I can guarantee you, you've gotten contaminated refrigerant and it's mixed with all. Then you spread that refrigerant into everybody else's vehicles like an STD. You dirty SO herpes, you goddamn. <laughs> okay, let's go on there. Um, if the vehicle's refrigerant is contaminated, refer customer to a facility that can carry out that carried out the last service. If the customer wishes to pay for additional cost, use an AC recovery equipment that is designed. No internet can uh, well, that is designed to recover contaminated refrigerant. You have a separate system. You have a separate machine. You have a separate recovery cylinder just designated for contaminated refrigerant. Disposal of contaminated refrigerant, waste hazard, waste accordance to federal and state laws. We have local, not pickup places, but you can drop off the refrigerant. 
I charge a minimum one hour. If somebody comes in my labor to do that and take care of that refrigerant, get out of there and dump it, that's $204 an hour uh, for me to dump it for them and get rid of the contaminated. That's not my fault you went somewhere to a hack shop who puts in propane or they put in 134 in a vehicle that needs YF refrigerant or they go to the internet and use a different refrigerant. Not my problem, your problem. You went to the hack shop, can't help you about that. But what I can do is help you with the Bureau of Automotive Repair, give you a list of everything that we found so you can go get all your money back from the previous repair shop. That I can help you with. Um, I hate hack shops, I hate ignorant, I hate cheap owners. If they don't wanna buy the equipment and do it right, get the hell go flip burgers or go scrub toilets uh what else that's it for now i think i'll get out of here this is cyt um cyt let me get out of here cytk and you could get this they have a 330 day free trial uh if you want to try it out i have an access code number uh code and it is lec air l l e c h i gotta rewrite this down and uh, AIR, A-I-R, all capital letters, all one word. Um, that's about it. All right, I'll catch you later. Oh, that's for another vehicle. And uh, gotta go.